My lords, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we continue the Transport Fever 2 playthrough Let's Play series using this custom map from the Steam Workshop that is based on Canada, more specifically the Rocky Mountains. Now recently in the recent episodes we've been working on British Columbia and the last thing we got done was a long haul refined oil haulage line that runs from Calgary over here into Chase. Now, one thing you may notice here is Chase Station has had a bit of a facelift and I've also placed down our headquarters. Now this was all done off camera, obviously. I do like to try and balance between doing this on camera and off camera because I do understand it isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I also realize some of you will want to watch it. So I'm trying to strike that correct balance at the moment between on and off camera. Now in today's episode we're going to continue on with the similar efforts in getting some of the industries over in British Columbia up and running and getting the goods that the towns require delivered into them as best as we can. Now the obvious and logical industry to focus on next is this steel mill here at Chase. As we can see, we do have a direct connection to the steel mill from the cargo yard that we've already got in place. So we don't have to worry about any short haul trucking. Instead, we just need to decide where we're going to ship in the coal and the iron from that the factory requires. Now, straight away, I've got my eye on this coal mine here at Seymour. If we have our station somewhere like this then we could quite easily connect in a rail line onto this line as a little branch off and then the coal train can run down here through Sycamus, Enderby and Armstrong and then hop onto this freight line here past Salmon Arm and make its way into Chase. Similarly we could do a similar setup here at this Sycamus coal mine it would be a longer distance to get into the main line however but we could run through this valley here although the terrain out here is quite uneven and treacherous as we can see so I would imagine this would be quite a long tunnel through here the one benefit of using this coal mine at Sycamus would be the coal trains would have enough room to get off of the main line and they could park up so to speak here while they're waiting for their sister trains to pick up any coal from here before heading back out. Now for the iron we have two options we have one up here at the end of this little finger of water and we have this one here out by Seymour Arm. I haven't really decided which of these two would be the best to use yet so basically we're just going to make that up as we go along. If we could get a station on this little edge here that's close enough to get a connection directly to Seymour Arm um, Iron Mine and then we could just run the track down here through this hilly region over the little lake here past Sorrento and then hook up down here. That would be quite easy and quite logical but that is terrain dependent although as we can see we do have something of a little valley that runs through here so we could follow the layer of land down there and that might work out quite nicely for the time being however let's focus on getting this coal mine set up and i do think i will opt for this one here for the extra space that the trains have got to park up and wait while they're waiting to get into the station at sycamus and that will free up any other trains wanting to pass by on our main line Obviously our Rocky Mountain passenger line does run down here so we don't want to be interrupting that. So let's go ahead and build us a station down here. What's behind us? There are a few industries and towns directly behind. So we probably do want to use a pass-through station down here. So with that in mind I will put a two-track station down. In fact I will go for three-track station. Now let's see here, the terrain is pretty horrendous, but I think we can make this work. Perhaps if we were to have it back here, 
so we are not cutting it into this hill quite as severely. That might work better for us. And what we'll do, we'll have this platform here as the active platform for the coal trains. And these two will just be a pass through if we do opt to extend the line down towards the quarry down here, as well as Cherryville and maybe even Lumbee as well. So let's get started with the connection into the main line then. So what we'll do first of all, we'll keep everything running flat as far as we can. Can we have a cutting there for now? We certainly can. We don't need a diamond slip switch here because this will be straight pass through. So all we have to do instead is ensure that this line has a double slip switch. We have a good junction so we can confirm that and take now the double slip switch there. That means they can use both lines in and out so that's all working as intended. Before we forget it's probably worthwhile to actually activate this connection here to the industry from the station. Otherwise we'll be scratching our heads later wondering why the heck no coal is being produced. And we'll just connect it in like that and can we delete that little bit there? We certainly can. There we go. So there we go, we have the active connection. Now we just need to concentrate on getting these tracks through this very mountainous terrain here and into our main line just over there. Now, as I said, this is more than likely going to be quite a large tunnel or several smaller tunnels, depending. What we want to do first of all, before we go much further, is check the terrain so our track is currently at 148 meters and where we are intending to join into the main line it's at 150 so we are pretty much at the correct height already so what we'll do is the rest of this track will change this to maintain current elevation that way when we emerge through these hills we should be in a good position to go ahead and snap straight in to the main line so we'll quickly run this through. This is going to be an expensive venture. That's fine by me. We do have the money to burn nowadays. So we may as well make use of it. Especially if it's going to make things a little bit more efficient for us in the long run. Now what we'll do, we'll start curving off. In fact, no we won't. We'll head straight. Or as straight as we can. There we go. And then from here, it will be quite a tight curve, as we can tell, but that's okay. Okay, so we can't quite meet this track without snapping parallel. So we'll bring in the curve, get rid of that. Maybe now we can snap in, actually. Nope, still not possible. It might be those signals that are causing us problems, but that's okay. How about now? There we go. Now we can do a direct connection. The junction isn't the best, but I think we can ease it off a little. It's not really making much difference, that is. I guess it's because it's snapping in over the lines regardless of that little X and Z attempt to remove that overlap so if we just go parallel then we know we're gonna have a nice junction so all's good in the end so there we go we have the connection we should now be able to put the line in from the coal mine over to chase i'm just going to put some clearing signals in along here just to get things flowing nicely and then I'll just quickly drop a few signals in along this length of tunnel. We are going to have to have them inside the tunnel just because of the sheer length of it. For now, we're just going to need two or three blocks, nothing too major. Just like so. And then we'll have a signal there. And then we want a two-way signal there for the trains that are departing. Here we'll have a stopping signal as well. Okay, so as I said, we should now be in a position to set up the coal freight line. So Sycamus North, we will change the name of it 
in a moment to Sigma's coal mine. And we want heading to Chase. I think we'll just share a platform with the oil freight line. Simply because both trains or both lines are only unloading in here. So they're not going to be sat around on the platform waiting for goods to be produced and returned to them. So in that case, it'll be a case of unloading and then immediately departing. So they're not going to hold each other up too much. So let's change that to platform four or even platform three. That's better. And we'll quickly name this line. So it's the coal freight line from Sycamus to Chase. We'll rename the name of this station out here to Sycamus Coal Mine. At this point, we're in a position now to be able to get a train running this line. And we'll use the new depot over here. So let's just buy ourselves a train. I'll go for the Mikado. It is a fair old distance and it's going to be hauling heavy coal. So it makes sense to have a somewhat beefy train on this. But we don't need to double head this. Not like we did with our oil train. And I'm going to go for 180 units capacity. And I'm also going to opt for three trains. It is running a fair old distance, so we may as well. They should be able to space themselves out quite nicely. And just for a change, I am actually going to colour that train in to the same colour as the line it's running on. Okay, so there's the coal line set up. Now we need to make a decision as to where we're going to bring in the ore from. Is there anything over here in fact we could use to be a bit different? Not really. The nearest one in the Rockies is by Argenta or the one by Rogers Pass. So we'll just opt for one of these two out here. Now as I said if we could get a station down here that has an active connection already to this iron mine and then we could just run it along here that might be the better option of the two. So let's just test that first of all. This doesn't need to be a pass-through station, so we will go for a terminus station. Okay, so we don't have a connection at that point. As we can see, it's not highlighting the station. Let's see then. Unless, let me just try this. If we put it in a direct connection onto the road, like so. If we manually draw in some roads from here up to the mines, will that give us that direct connection now? No. Okay then. That's a little unfortunate, so let's get rid of that and we shall have to rethink this strategy. Perhaps we are going to be better served using this coal mine over here than at Seymour Arm. The train isn't the best out here, but then again, it wasn't the best up there either. Okay, I think what we'll do... Do we need a pass-through? I don't think we do. So we'll go for the terminus station again. Can we get this to raise up so it's at the same level as the industry? So if we put it something like that... And then quickly draw a road like that. That's going to give us the connection without any question. There we go. It's a shame it's not parallel with the industry, but that's fine. It's there now. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then what we need to do is bring our tracks out the way. Like so. And I think we'll come out straight, curve off right towards Seymour Arm and this lumber mill, lumber camp I should say, just there. Obviously we're going to have to tunnel through this mountain, that's okay. And then we'll hopefully emerge from the tunnel around about here. And then we can run parallel with this road all the way down. And then we'll connect in somewhere around Sycamus to gain access to the main line. So let's go ahead and do that and see if it's going to work. So what we'll do, we'll put a branch here because we'll just 
you will track the entire run, because why the heck not? So let's see here. So if we keep this at the current elevation level, and let's see, if we just curve round to somewhere like that, we're going to need a bridge here. I don't think earthworks would work. Well, they would work, but they wouldn't look realistic, so to speak. So we will have a bridge instead, but that's not a problem. Now we can head into the tunnel. There we go. Snap parallel, please. That's better. Let's see where we are. So we want to still be heading over to the right through this mountain. And we'll see what sort of elevation we are going to emerge from. Okay, so we are quite elevated, so what we'll do... No, we don't want to head down. Sorry, upwards. We want to head downwards. And then let's see... If we come out like that, at an angle, we should be able to slope gradually down to the side of the road without the need for any bridge works. Maybe we won't. However, I think Earthworks would blend in quite nicely out here. So we'll go for that. We don't want to go for that, however. And now if we just let the game decide the best elevation for us and then stick with it. There we go. Just while we're in this area, we'll quickly just spread out this Earthworks a little. So it isn't quite so obvious what we've just done. And it looks more like a natural lay and follow of the land. There we go, that looks better. And now, as I said, it's a case of following this road around. We might tunnel through here. Because that would allow us more room to get in before Sycamus without interfering with the town development too much. And it would also give us a point where we could branch off and have a cargo station down here for the construction materials plant and the sawmill. So let's try that and see what we get. So we'll curve at just a touch. Maintain the current height. Although that is producing a rather ugly cutting in the side of the mountain. Hopefully we can do something with the terrain modification to hide that a little. And then we want to run it straight. And now if we curve off to the left, we'll go through our tunnel as intended. We will allow it to rise up just a little. It's obviously doing it over such a great distance that the gradient should be too severe and cause too many issues for the trains. And then from this point out, it's just a case of hooking into the main line. If we can get in before those signals, that would be ideal. Let's see here. Okay, let's just check the overlap. That is more than acceptable for me. It should be the same there as well. Ooh, it's a little... No, let's just rework that last little bit there. Just see if we can get a little better overlap on the junction. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll go off the left-hand track instead. Here. Can we get it to connect in now? It's struggling. Not sure why it's. Oh, there. Oh, no. I am not quite sure why it's not wanting to snap in. It might be something to do with the road. So let's just temporarily delete this stretch of road here. And then we can relay it once the tracks are taken care of. Nope. Still not wanting to do it. That's quite frustrating. There's no reason for it not to snap in. We're at roughly the same height and everything, so I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. That's better. And that's a better junction. OK, 
connect you in there you're all happy everybody's good reconnect this row here just check it's not done too many weird things to the track no the track looks nice and level so everybody's happy so now let's just put some signals in in and around this junction to offer some protection to the junction I don't mind if the trains block the highway, they won't be here for that long to cause too much of an impact. That signal there can clear the junction, so we don't need to put a short signal in. But we want a clearing signal heading the opposite way, so just there. And we have the stopping signal for the junction. We also want a clearing signal over here to free up the junction once again. And then it's just a case of the usual blocks along the way. Again, I'm going to say maybe three or four blocks along here is going to be plenty for the time being. We could always add more in at a later point if we add a lot of trains down here, if we have a lot of traffic, but I can't see that we ever will. So if we just go like that, we want a stopping signal just before the junction. And we'll have a clearing signal for the trains departing. So just quickly rename this to Seymour Arm Iron Mine. Also, if we spell iron correctly, that would be brilliant. But there we go. So that should now form a valid line from Seymour Arm over to Chase. Let's see. So Seymour Arm Iron Mine, this is going to be orange. And you're coming into Chase Cargo Station. Yes, you didn't have any issues. You're opting to use platform number one. I think I will accept that. Hopefully the iron trains and the wheat haulage trains won't trip over each other too much. I don't think that they would. Let's just quickly get all this assigned and set up correctly. So iron ore at Seymour Arm. Loading nothing at Chase. And your maximum wait time at CMR Arm would be 60 seconds. And then we can now name this up as well. There we go. Iron R3 CMR Arm to chase. Let's get a train purchased. Again, I think we'll go for three on this run. We want the gondolas. 180 again. Why not? Three of them, please. We'll not colour them this time. I don't know why I did last time force of habit I think so that's that done so we should now start seeing coal being hauled over here do we have coal being produced we certainly do we have a full platform of coal awaiting the trains one thing I do want to do is just do the line setup for Sycamus so we'll do the usual setup we all know it by now the 60 seconds and that and that there we go I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that none of the coal trains have yet arrived down here. Is that one of them now? Indeed it is. Looking rather brooding and ominous in the black colour. So that must be our first one, so the other two must be a little bit further down the line. No problem. Okay, so very soon we're going to start having steel produced here. Now where are the consumers? There's one over in Calgary, which has been supplied anyway. There's the machinery factory in Calgary, which we're not going to supply from here. And there's also the Kelowna Machines Factory, which is right at the edge of the map here, as we can see. Now, the question will be now, how do we get from Chase down into Kelowna? I suppose we could have a branch somewhere around here that slowly descends down to this sort of elevation level, connect into the line here, or even could run alongside the line here, and a secondary bridge over the Okanagan Lake, connecting into our little shuttle line, and then we could convert this into a dual purpose station, and then just handle the last leg with vehicles, road vehicles, but given the fact we're also going to be hauling lumber down here and then obviously hauling the finished product back, 
it would probably make it a little bit too crowded and we would need excessive cargo platforms in this area and it would busy up this line a little bit too much I think so I think on the back of that we'll have a dedicated freight station down in Kelowna that handles the planks, the steel, the outgoing tools and machinery as well as the incoming bread, bricks and fuel. So let's get cracking with that. But first of all, we still need to determine how we're accessing this freight line here. So if we have our station somewhere in this area, lines could come up along here. Could we have a large bridge? Well, we could, which spans the Okanagan Lake and our passenger line. But it would be very, very tall and just look a little bit silly, I think. What we could do instead is come off from down here and curve back on ourselves and then head down this way. We might have to dual track this bridge at that point just to keep things flowing a little bit more freely, especially because eventually we're going to have a fair few trains operating in and around this area. The other alternative is to have a dumping station, so to speak, down here that handles all the incoming and outgoing cargo. Again, that would mean a lot of road vehicle lines being set up, traveling through West Bank and Kelowna. However, we do have the space to have a fairly substantial station around here, and it wouldn't interfere with our passenger line in any way. And all we'd have to do at that point is run the tracks along the Okanagan Lake and then connect into the freight line around here. So I think we will opt to do that. Now I've just noticed our coal train and our oil train are both using the station, sorry, the track alongside platform one as their pass through station. We really don't want them doing that, so let's quickly amend them. So manage the line. So after you hit Northwest Calgary, sorry, Northeast Calgary, so on your way into Chase, you want to go via that signal. And then after Chase, you want to go via that signal. Perfect. And then if we get the coal delivery line, which is this one here. So after Sycamus, so when you're heading into Chase, you're going that way. And when you're heading out from Chase back to the coal mine, you're going that way. Lastly, we also need to do the same for the iron ore freight line. So once again, heading that way and that way. Now it might be that we need to have this as a dual track pass through, as well as dual track in this corner here. Because at the minute we are overhanging a junction and that's going to be causing delays, no doubt. So let's see about getting that done. First of all, we need to get this train out of the way. But we want to stop it before this train sets off. There we go. I think that's just good enough. Although I've just unpaused it again, so we shall see. So from this point, we want to go ahead and lay a double track. It's not quite snapped properly, that has it. I'm not sure why. Perhaps I need to come back a little more. And let's try it from this point. Where's the end of the track? Where are you? There you are, hiding underneath the train. Okay, that's better. It doesn't have that weird groove between the two tracks anymore. So come this way. And in fact, we will double track this bit as well. So this little bit here and here can be deleted. 
this can then be connected in like that. We want two-way signals just so everybody knows what we are doing. What we will need to do, or will we? What we yes, what we will need to do is amend the train routes to take into account this is all now double tracked. So they can't go back via these signals anymore. But in fact we can actually delete these signals now. Yes. We want a... Oh, I see the problem. Right. Okay. This needs reworking just a little. So, you now need to run straight and then connect in and continue on that way. That's good. And you need to just connect in there like that. And that's all good. The junctions are tolerable. This needs a diamond now. It's going to be a short diamond because of the space constraints. That's not a problem. And then, no, that's the last ring we want to put out here. That's not going to serve us any purpose at all. And then like that, and like that, and like that. That should now be okay. I think the problems... Do we need... Ah, yes, we need to do the same sort of thing here, look. So let's just take that back. And that bit there. And that bit there. In fact, we'll get rid of that as well. And we'll essentially just rework this from scratch like that. You want to merge across to the far side. That's a pretty decent junction. And you're merging into the near side track. Snap it even. That's got rid of the issues. Everybody's happy. Let's get a signal here just to protect it. Although they've all now reverted to heading this way out, which is unfortunate. We didn't need the diamond here after all, but never mind, it's there now. So what we need to do is revert these goods lines back onto these two tracks over here. On their way out, they've decided to use them, which is great. It's just on the way back in, sorry, on the way out from Chase, they've opted not to use them. So let's sort them out. So British Columbia Oil Freight. After Chase, please come via this signal. That's fine. Coal Freight. After Chase, come via this signal as well. And then the last one. So the last two. We've got the Iron Ore Freight. Again, you're coming back that way. And finally, the Wheat that way. Ah, the food freight as well, of course. After chase, you're coming in that way. There we go. So there should be no disruption to our passenger service on these platforms anymore. Now, uh, where were we? Yes. West Bank and Kelowna. So, as I was saying, if we come off down here, we could have a large goods exchange just by this farm, actually. And then have several road lines set up to handle the cargo into wherever it needs to go, whether it be the factories or as a drop off into the towns themselves, or even as a return from the factory to get on the main line to be delivered to the various cities. I think that's the way we will do it. Although I do think I might leave that for a future episode. Just so I can have a little play about off camera and decide if that really is the better or the best solution to handling the cargo that is going to be doing all its stuff down here. Or if there is a better solution out there that I've not quite considered yet. So in the meantime, everything else appears to be running quite smoothly. The coal trains have made at least one pickup, as we can see here. There's some coal missing. That was full a minute moment ago. What do we have here? Our first electric train. Wow. Okay. Um, excitement. Do we put it on straight away? Hmm. See, that's the rub, isn't it? Because I was thinking, 
Okay, let's get the the British Columbia oil train upgraded to an electric train, but I'm pretty certain the majority of the Rocky Mountain Railway is not electrified at this point, and to electrify it all will probably take at least half an hour. So what I might do is end this episode here on a bit of a, I'm not saying a cliffhanger, but as a bit of a giveaway as to what's happening in the next episode. And between now and then, I'll upgrade, in fact, sod it, I'll upgrade the entire network to electrified tracks. And then when we return for the next instalment, that's when we'll start plugging in some of these electric trains onto our network. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So, yes, we'll call an end to this one for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, share your appreciation down below by hitting that like button. Perhaps leaving a comment if you have any suggestions or ideas. Yeah, just let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so. It helps support the channel and does aid with growth. And it also makes me feel pretty good. And who doesn't want that? But for the meantime, all that remains for me to say is, as always, ladies and gentlemen, you take very good care of yourselves. It's ta-ta for now.